So we are going to talk about ultrasonography of the abdomen of small animals. First for the abdominal ultrasound examination, it has to be uh, first after uh, a good clinical examination and eventual laboratory test that will guide us a bit about the uh, pathology that we uh, expect. We have to evaluate all the abdominal organs, so if they change in size, in shape and structures, and also to see if there is uh, nodules or masses within the parenchyma of those organs. And uh, we have to keep in mind that with abdominal ultrasonography, we can't get to a definitive diagnosis most of the time. Just with abdominal ultrasonography, we will need always fine needle aspirations or biopsies of those lesions or those organs to get a definitive diagnosis. So we will start with the uh, ultrasonography of the liver. So the indications of the ultrasonography of the liver are uh, multiple. We can uh, do it because we feel uh, nepatomegaly on abdominal palpation or we see it on abdominal radiography uh, because we palpate also a cranial abdominal mass. In case of uh, joint this, uh, we uh, have also to evaluate the liver. If we have increased liver enzymes, if we want to do a metastasis check, uh, for example, if uh, in the staging of a mastocytoma, uh, in case of fever of unknown origin, if uh, there is gastrointestinal signs, uh, in case of PUPD, or if we want to aspirate or biopsy some lesions of the liver. So first, uh, to perform an ultrasonography of the liver, we have to put the transducer caudal to the xiphoid process, and the probe will be directed cranially and dorsally. Uh, in that way, we will try to really observe all the liver from right to left and from ventral to dorsal. We can also perform an intercostal approach uh, by putting the probe in between the ribs. Uh, that will be mostly for dogs with deep chest uh, morphology, where the liver will be mostly situated behind the ribs and would be difficult to access just by putting the tr transducer caudal to the xiphoid. Then uh, the liver, so a bit of anatomy, it's caudal to the diaphragm and cranial to the stomach, the spleen and the right kidney. So for the liver parenchyma, it has to be homogeneous. Uh, the liver edges will have sharp and pointy uh, edges, uh, meaning quite triangular. If they are getting rounded, it's already not normal. The echogenicity of the liver is in general the same as the one of the kidney, as we can see here on this uh, image, we have quite the same echogenicity in between the liver and the right kidney. Uh, sometimes the kidney is a bit less echogenic than the liver, and uh, the spleen on the left side will be always more echoic, so more bright than the liver. So for the liver parenchyma, we can first observe diffuse changes. Uh, mostly it will be increased uh, echogenicity, hyperechogenic uh, liver. So it will be brighter in general than the spleen uh, or similar uh, to the spleen. It's uh, difficult in fact to assess those uh, diffuse changes in the echogenicity is quite uh, subjective. But like here we have an example of a diffuse hyperechoic liver. Uh, which is a bit uh, increased uh, in, um, in echogenicity. So this increased echogenicity can be due to different things. It can be due to lipidosis, fibrosis, lymphoma or steroid-induced hepatopathy. Sometimes in some uh, chronic hepatitis we can see that as well. Um, with lipidosis we will observe here like in this case, uh, an increased attenuation of the ultrasound beam. It means that uh, the um, ultrasound beam is stopped quite uh, strongly by this uh, lipidotic liver. And in fact, the liver is hyperechoic and then it will become here darker in the most deepest part of the ultrasound uh, image. It's just because there is this increased attenuation of the ultrasound beam. So that's quite typical of lipidosis. Uh, in those cases of lipidosis or with lymphoma, the liver will be increased in echogenicity, but also in general increased in size, also with steroid-induced hepatopathy. When, on the contrary, when there is a chronic hepatitis, we would expect to have more a decreased size of the uh, liver. 
Then we can have also as a diffuse changes a diffuse decreased echogenicity of the liver parenchyma. So it will be less dark, uh, less echogenic, so darker than the uh, renal cortex. Um, and we will have in fact what we uh, call the increased visibility of the wall of the portal vessels that we can see here. So we can see here, for example, that all those portal vessels are definitely much more visible than normally. And here we have a, uh, the edge of the liver that are a bit rounded, but definitely this liver is decreased in echogenicity. So the main causes of decreased echogenicity of the parenchyma of the liver are an acute hepatitis, congestion, lymphoma and leukemia. Uh, that will be mostly uh, what we can observe in those cases. And then, as a final diffuse change, we can have also diffuse heterogeneity of the liver. This is less common. We can see that with the chronic hepatitis, but also with the, the hepatocutaneous syndrome uh, and some cases of neoplasia. So we have here an example where we can see a diffuse heterogeneity of the liver parenchyma with multiple hypoechoic areas dispersed throughout the parenchyma. In this case, it was just found as a vacuole, vacuolar degeneration on aspiration, but in general we will find that with those, uh, those causes here. Then the liver and parenchyma can also present some focal changes. So we can have focal uh, anechoic lesions. Mostly it will be some small cysts like we can see here or larger cysts like we can see uh, in this image, so very hypo uh, anechoic cysts which, which create a distal acoustic enhancement, so it means that it's a bit more bright underneath the cyst than uh, on the side of the cyst, so that's due in fact to a decreased attenuation of the ultrasound beam by the cyst because the fluid is not stopping the ultrasound. Uh, so Mostly it will be because of cysts, but we can have some metastasis that will look like uh, cyst-like lesions or uh, necrotic areas or hematomas or abscess that will also be uh, very uh, anechoic on uh, ultrasound. We can have also hypoechogenic lesions. So those hypoechoic lesions like we can see here, uh, we can have multiple differential for them. Um, they can be either neoplastic, so metastasis, but also with some neoplasia such as lymphoma. Uh, we can also see that with nodular hyperplasia and sometimes some case again of necrosis of or abscess. The problem of the ultrasound here is that it's not uh, very specific to determine the cause of the hypoechoic nodules like that. So it's very sensitive because we see them very easily, but then it's difficult to differentiate just with ultrasound uh, between a malignant uh, problem or between nodular hyperplasia, which is then very benign and uh, without consequences for the dog. Finally, we get also hyperechogenic uh, lesions. So, in general, those lesions are mostly benign uh, because they are often composed of fat or steroid hepatopathy. But we have to keep in mind that in some rare cases, like here, they can be also uh, due to uh, neoplasia or metastasis. Sometimes those hyperechoic lesions, like in this case, are just representing some mineralization, dystrophic mineralizations in the parenchyma, and then we see that there is an acoustic shadow underneath the lesion, um, which represents uh, mineralizations because there is this attenuation of the ultrasound beam underneath, underneath the lesion. Then we have the mixed echogenic uh, lesions. So mixed echogenic means that you can have uh, either lesions with isoechoic and hypoechoic components like we have here. So we here we have a round ovoid to ovoid lesion with some anechoic or hypoechoic cavities, but the rest of the lesion is isoechoic or in this case as well. So mostly those mixed echoic lesions are representing neoplasia, but again, they can be also benign if they are due to hematomas or abscess or nodular hyperplasia. 
So then, as a conclusion for those hepatic lesions, we always have to perform uh, fine needle aspiration or biopsies to determine the origins of those focal lesions. Um, because on the base of the ultrasound examination, we cannot differentiate between benign and malignant lesions. Uh, before we do that, we have, of course, to check the coagulation and the platelet counts of those uh, animals. Uh, and we, of course, can perform those aspiration or biopsy under ultrasound guidance. Mm -hmm.